All right, welcome back to another episode of Beer, Bacon, and Bros. Tonight it's just Keith and Chris. Uh, tonight we're going to discuss some NFL trade spe uh, speculations and discuss some of the trades that have already happened because there's actually been some significant trades that have been made. Yeah, I would say there's... To two, a certain degree. There's there's two significant trades right. say, that have already been made. So. so, but before we get into that, make sure you are uh, subscribing subscribe to the channel. It's free to you. It really helps us grow the channel. Helps us grow the family. We're up over 145 now. I think we're 146. Yep. So, you know, we're definitely moving on up. It's great. It's great to have you guys in, the, in our family. Definitely, you know, make sure you drop us a like or a comment. Let us know what you think. Um, so, yeah. But getting into the NFL trade uh, trades that we got going on so far. Obviously, probably the biggest one that's come across is Christian McCaffrey going from Carolina. the Panthers to the 49ers. Yeah. Four. Four total draft picks. For four total draft picks. Yeah, so. so me personally, I mean, I, I, I follow the Panthers because I lived in Charlotte for so long. So I guess, I'm, yes, I'm a Panthers fan because I do follow the team. I think this trade was done a year too late. I would, I would agree with that. I, I think they should have made this trade last year, if not the year before. Mm -hmm. And you could have got easily got a, maybe a first round, maybe two first round picks for him. You would have got two first round picks for Christian McCaffrey, so, maybe 365 days ago. Yeah. So I really think they, I mean, obviously they're trying, they're in a, they're in a complete rebuild, rebuild mode right now, firing Matt Rule, firing another coach, trade another trade they made, trading off Robbie Anderson. So they're clearly going to, I think, I feel like they're going to go in the direction of they're going to build this team around DJ Moore. I, I don't, I don't think the Panthers are lacking in the running back room. I mean, clearly. McCaffrey, when healthy, is one of the best running backs in the game. Yeah. But behind that, that shitty offensive line and no quarterback, I mean, they really have no choice but to go out and trade him. Yeah. I, I think that was – I think that one and then the, the James Robinson trade to New York. To the Jets. Just, just two days, yeah. you know, two days ago, I think, are the two that we probably want to talk about before we jump into the speculations. But well, I just have a guess today because Brees Hall was playing on Sunday. Yeah. And so – Yeah. My opinion uh, for the Jets, obviously you're five and two somehow, and I don't know <laughs> no, we how. Say that. <laughs> so uh, for them, great move, honestly. I mean, you go get a guy that Jacksonville really didn't know what to do with mm -hmm. because he's played less and less over the last three weeks as Etienne kind of works his way back into this offense. He's completely healthy now, clearly, and Travis Etienne has been a stellar player for three weeks now. And so it's hard to play James Robinson. You right. don't really know what to do with him. Jets come call and say, hey, you know, we need a running back and this is what we're willing to offer. And it was good enough for Jacksonville. Yeah, so, so I think it's a great move for the Jets if they are really trying to win right now, which it seems like they're doing a good enough job to win. Yeah, I mean, so, Sauce Gardner's been fantastic for them at the cornerback yeah, position. I, I mean, mean, he's been he's been elite the yeah. last, like, two or three weeks. I mean, no, they can't throw on him. And Zach Wilson's actually not turning the ball over, <laughs> which is amazing. Freeze Hall, I thought, has played really well. The running backs are catching the ball out of the backfield for them. They're getting just enough out of the wide receiver group. I think the Jets, if they are going to go all in on this, would be, a, a, again, there's some guys I want to throw out name speculation-wise, but I think the Jets would be a, a team that would be interested in getting some of those some of these wide receiver names. Yeah. And uh, and then their defense has, has played good enough to contain everybody. So All right, so let's talk about some of the speculations. Big names out there that are on teams that are kind of sputtering, right, mm -hmm. like the Bears. And so Roquan Smith is a name that's out there for them. Um <laughs> For the Browns, you're talking about Kareem Hunt and Greedy Williams are out there. Mike Gusecki for Miami. Uh, Sidney Jones. Odo Beckham Jr. is obviously still a free agent. I think Brandon Cooks is my favorite name here for the wide receiver position mm -hmm. outside of DJ Moore and Brian Burns. Um, well, Brian Burns is not a court, uh, receiver. No, he's a defense end. Yeah. But um, uh, Robert Quinn is another guy. KJ Hamler is another receiver that's out there, possibly. I don't believe the Jerry Judy rumor. I don't think. I don't think the Broncos are willing to move on from Jerry Judy yet. So no, they 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 trade Russell Wilson at this point before they traded Jerry Judy. Yeah. So Roquan Smith rumored to the Eagles, who are obviously six and zero. They need defense. That would that would bolster that that team so much that really I mean really I don't think they need defensive line I think they probably oh, no, need, the front four is stellar yeah I think they need linebacker or really safety honestly mm -hmm. I think safety would be a really interesting position for them to land somebody but well, I think you could play Roquan, Roquan Smith at if you need him to get back a, there and play some middle linebacker. linebacker yeah but you could put him out put him back in center field and let him nah, let he's, him a, he's a middle linebacker but I think for the Eagles this helps them in a division where there is some some teams that like to run the football, 
Uh, obviously, Washington really getting into Brian Robinson Jr. Uh, you know, Ezekiel Elliott, obviously, for, for the Cowboys. So, uh, Actually, I'd be more worried about uh, Saquon Barkley this year. Yeah, Saquon. He's, he's back to Penn State form. That guy's, that guy's killing it. Yeah, I think that makes some sense. Um, I, I think other teams that would probably be really interested in Roquan, uh, you're talking about somebody like maybe the Packers that are probably trying to bolster their roster a little bit. Uh, the Giants obviously could use it on the defensive side of the football if they're really going to try and win. Right. Uh, same thing for the Jets. You know, you look out west. I don't know that the Rams really need it defensively, but the Rams need something to help them, and, and getting a, a, a guy that can elevate that defense. Bills don't really need it. So, uh, for me, I think the Eagles probably, for Roquan Smith, probably yeah, make the most sense. The bill, what the Bills would need potentially at this point is a running back, which I know we're getting ready to go into. Yeah. But I think they could also look at getting a safety since they lost a ha-ha. They lost everybody. I mean, well, they're, they're getting they're they're getting Tre'Davious White back, but that's just Tre'Davious White can back at the corner, right? But I mean, they still have Poyer out there and at, at a safety, so I think they need a safety over a safety and a running back. Uh, the next name next name, uh, name down the list I thought was really interesting, Greedy Williams, because the Browns are obviously sputtering. They're not going to win this two season. Five. Yeah, there's all, what I I saw a great stat today that I can't wait to tell our friend Devin. 12, 12 of 256 teams have started 2-5 and five and made the playoffs over the last 20 years. Not that one. Yeah. And, and an angle, the Browns ain't going to be number 13. Nope. So, uh, Greedy Williams, I've always been a big Greedy Williams fan. I think he's a good corner. I think he's a good man corner. I think he's not physical enough to play on big receivers like a DK Metcalf or yeah. Mike Evans or somebody like that. But I think he's a good man corner on smaller receivers. They have him going to the Vikings. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the Vikings are going to buy him. I don't know. You know, maybe maybe the Vikings have been a sneakily good team this year. Yeah, and maybe they feel really good about their chances of beating the Packers and winning that division and going to the playoffs and having a chance. But I mean, I think there's a lot of other teams that need cornerback. Like, dear God, Kansas City needs cornerback. They need a corner. Um, The Chargers need cornerback. Well, they like. Well, they, they just lost Jackson. Yeah, J.C. Jackson. I mean, um, he's, he's out for the year. Truth be told, the Rams could use another corner. The 49ers could use another corner. So yeah, the um, 49ers just got burnt the hell up on Sunday. Yeah. So I just, I really think there's a lot of other teams that could. Um, hell, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers could use another corner. So um, they, they need a receiver that could catch the ball. No, nah, they need offensive line, but. I think there's a lot of other teams that make a little bit more sense for Greedy Williams and the Vikings, but I think he's a decent corner to be out there on the market in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I agree. So, all right, let's get into it because we, we've been waiting to reveal this one. Kareem Hunt to the Bills. I love that move. Absolutely love it. I picked the Bills to go, uh, what did I say? I think you said 15 and 2. I think you said 15 and 2. 15 and 2. You put, you put Kareem Hunt on that team. Give them a running back because Kareem Hunt clearly is the number one running back on half of the, half the rosters in the NFL. Yeah, I mean he's he are he's already an upgrade to Devin Singletary. He's definitely an upgrade to Zach Moss and whoever the rookie was, James Cook from Georgia. Yeah, I mean he's definitely an upgrade to him. So I think you put Kareem Hunt on there with the offensive style they play, the downhill run, and just the swing passes they throw out to the, to the running backs. That puts them over the edge. It's going to be a hefty price. The Bills would have to pay a hefty price. And I, and I think that the Bills have already wanted to move on from Zach Moss. Zach Moss wants out of Buffalo. He's not getting any playing time. He wants out. I think if you can put a combination of Zach Moss and Picks together to go get Kareem Hunt, if you're Buffalo, you have to. Oh, absolutely. This is your season. If you're Buffalo, you are you are clearly the best team in the NFL right now. This is your season, and, and you know I still think there, there needs to be somebody like a Greedy Williams or somebody that can play safety to come help them because Poirier's good, Micah Hyde's done for the year, but that's who it was. Not the Ha Ha Clinton Dix, but I know, I know who you meant. Yeah. But, um, but they both went to Alabama. <laughs> yeah, and so they, there's got to be somebody to come play safety for Buffalo as well. But I mean, Kareem Hunt to Buffalo. Would be huge for the Bills. Absolutely. Would be huge, and it makes a lot of sense. So I love this mm-hmm. as, as a rumored projection. So I think that would be a great pick for them. Mike Gusecki. I don't know that Miami's ready to sell just yet. 
and I don't know that Miami probably should be ready to sell just yet, but I do think that Mike Gusecki is not getting enough looks in that offense to probably be happy. Well, and, and when you have he's, Waddle he's got a lot, Hill, he's got a lot of value in him right now too. And when you have Waddle and Hill, it's just so hard to think about getting Mike Gusecki the ball. And there's teams that need a tight end. Oh, absolutely. Like the Panthers need a tight end. <laughs> well, the Panthers are terrible, but. Um, the pa- <laughs> doesn't mean they don't need a tight end. <laughs> yeah. The Packers could really use an athletic tight end. Robert Tanyan's good, don't get me wrong, but the Packers could use a tight end. I, for me, the Bucks. The Bucks have not looked good. Oh, yeah. That Rob, Rob Rukowski and Mike Gusecki, very similar body styles, very similar athletes. Yeah, Cameron Bray has not had a good year. Oh, God. Kyle Rudolph hasn't looked good. No. I honestly could see uh, the Giants going after Kaseki too because, you know, they lost Evan Ingram, who yeah. was a very athletic tight end, yeah. who's basically a wide receiver lined up at tight end, which is almost what Mike Kaseki is. So, I mean, I feel like that would be a, that'd be a pretty solid play to move to move on or to have as well. Sometimes you know what you're talking about because that's who they have Mike Kaseki going to is the Giants. There you so. go. And for me, I mean, if you're the Giants and, you know, you're going, if you're going to buy into thinking that this is a winning team at 6-1, and one, Mike Gusecki makes sense. I mean, Wondell Robinson, Darius Slayton, Marcus Johnson, Kadarius Toney are the guys that are wide receivers. Mike Gusecki would absolutely help you in the red zone. Mm-hmm. They have the Cowboys adding Odell Beckham Jr. What's your thoughts there on that? That's a very Jerry Jones move. <laughs> that is a very Jerry Jones move. I don't think uh, – I don't know. Uh, uh, Odell's going to go wherever the money's right. Odell has no loyalty to any team. Yeah. He's going to go wherever the money's right. I mean, it was it was rumored he was going to go to Buffalo. Then it was rumored he was going to stay in L.A. So, I mean, I think – honestly, I think Odell – I mean, Dallas needs, a, needs a, uh, another wide receiver. CeeDee Lamb has not been – that great this year, at least from what I've seen. Yeah, and that could be because Dak wasn't there, or which hell Cooper Rush played better than Dak played. So, you know, I don't know if it's that, but you know, honestly, I think Odell would, would value going to Green Bay. I think for Odell, he's kind of money chasing right now, and well, Green Bay can't give him money exactly. And and I don't know that I I think that Dallas needs to add a wide receiver. Like I have Dak Prescott as my fantasy quarterback. God bless yeah, him. Yeah, I'm two and five. So. Um, yeah, I know. But I, I think that when I look at this, I do think Dallas needs a receiver. I think the DJ Moore move would make more sense. I think Brandon Cooks makes a lot of sense. He's ready to get out of Houston. He's just Houston 20 miles on the road. Exactly. I mean, Brandon Cooks would be the guy that can take the top off this, you know, take a top off of defense. Which C.D. Lamb can do that. But I think C.D. and Michael Gallup are more the possession receivers, shorter, mm-hmm. more combination routes. Randy Cooks makes the sense to take the top off the of defense. He's a guy that's going to get a lot of looks. He's definitely getting traded out of Houston, and I think that just makes more sense than Odell does to me. Robert Quinn is the next name that I think we're, we're going to really talk about. They have him going to the Bengals. Bengals obviously 4-3, and three, need defense, need defensive end. They need pass rusher. Robert Quinn, obviously a guy that's played really well for Chicago over the years. I mean, I don't know that... I don't know that I would consider Robert Quinn an elite pass rusher. I don't know about you. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on who you have on the line with him. I mean, he looked good when you had uh, Akeem Hicks up there and Quill Mack on the outside, on the other side. So, I mean, you know, if you put talent around them, they look better than what they are. I mean, obviously Clemson. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't put him as an elite pass rusher, though, no. Yeah. But a 6'4", 245-pound defensive end, I mean, at 32 years old, he makes sense. It's probably a guy that's probably not a super expensive guy to go get either. Yeah, um, it would be an easy it'd be an easy grab for them. You know, two draft picks is probably all you had to give up for him. Third and a fourth. Or yeah, yeah, exactly what I was thinking, third and fourth. So, you know, for the Bengals, you need somebody. I think Brian Burns at, at Carolina obviously makes a little bit more sense, in my opinion. I think they have to give up more than that for him, though. I totally agree. I, I think that if – well, I mean, if you're Cincinnati and you're willing to buy in and the fact that you think you're going to go to the Super Bowl again, buying in on Brian Burns is smarter than, you know, kind of just duffing around and, and you know, getting a 32-year-old guy that might could help you. So, obviously, a 24 Burns is, you know – 
extremely going to be expensive as far as the draft picks go. A guy that's already got five sacks this year for a really crappy Panthers team. Yeah. So, um, and a guy that I want to say had double digit sacks last year. Yeah, I think he did have like two. No, he, didn't, he had nine. He's had so the guys had seven and a half, nine, nine, and five. So I mean, he's a guy that's going to end up with double digit sacks this year for sure. But um, and at only twenty four years old, he will carry a pretty hefty price yeah. tag. So. Um, yeah, I, I think the Robert Quinn move would be better for them at that point. And then final name on our list for this segment is going to be K.J. Hamler. Obviously a guy out of Denver. Not the number one receiver, probably not the number two receiver for them either, obviously behind Courtney Sutton and Jerry Judy. But a guy that has brought some speed, caught some good balls, and been a big playmaker. They have him going to the Rams. Um, yeah, because Allen Robinson clearly hasn't been the answer. And I just don't know that it's really Allen Robinson's fault, in my opinion. I, I think he hasn't done much either. Exactly. In my opinion, I think you have Allen Robinson and Cooper Cup. I don't know that KJ Hamler is what the Rams are missing to put themselves from three and three to. No, they need a running back. Well, they're going to get rid of Cam Akers too. I guess that's another name we can talk about in a second. But um, you know, for me, I just don't know that KJ Hamler makes a lot of sense for them. I don't know that, like, I'm not going to say that K.J. Hamler makes a lot of sense for the Packers either, right? Packers are a team that clearly needs wide receiver. K.J. Hamler might would be interesting now that I think about it more as a as a Dallas pick. Yeah. I think that could be a, a good fit for K.J. Hamler. Be your over-the-top type of guy? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I think that would work for them because he's more of a slot guy anyway. I mean, that would work in Green Bay as well to run what, what Randall Cobb used to do when he was actually 26. Yeah. And not 38. Yeah, I know. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I feel like that would be the same, a similar type of play that Green Bay could look at potentially doing as well. Yeah. I think that makes I think that that makes sense. I think Dallas is probably my favorite pick for that one right there, actually, though. And I don't know, I think more a little bit more about it. So, uh, I think KJ Hamler and Dallas makes a little more sense. Well, we all we all know that Denver just needs to go ahead and trade old Russell Wilson out. Oh, wow. Yeah. If you haven't watched that, check out the our head. video on whether yeah. Denver was better with Russell Wilson. It's from two weeks ago, and it still makes – it's getting worse and worse. I mean, we yeah, – It's what, gotten what, worse. What we said is actually coming true. So. Yeah, it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. Yeah. 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 So, so. Um, all right, final person. We'll talk about Cam Akers. I, I think I've, – I've always been a fan of Cam Akers since he came out of high school, went to Florida State. I think that Cam's time in the Rams is done. I think they clearly are on Darren Henderson Jr. and they're not going to give Cam enough touches to make him happy. Any thoughts on your predictions for where Cam should go? I know, I know my thought on where they should, where they should send him or where he should want to go at least. I'm trying to think of actually who needs a running back. Um, I mean, honestly, you can you can look at, at shipping him to San Francisco. Well, no, they just got CMC. Yeah. Uh, Seattle's got Kenneth Walker, who's killing it. Actually, Seattle was going to be one of my top two. I mean, he think he could go there, but with Penny, with Penny going down, I think Kenneth Walker has battled some injuries this year and has done very well. I totally agree with you on I mean, that. He's he's killing it right now. I think I think he makes a lot of sense though. Yeah. I mean, the only problem with that is that's an interdivisional foe. Yeah, I, I don't think that's likely. My other pick or my other name that I was thinking of that probably makes a little bit of sense is Denver because Melvin Gordon and Lavazes Murray are not getting it done for Denver. I think well, Melvin that, Melvin Gordon has fumbleitis. He fumbles every damn time he touches the ball. Yeah, don't remind me. He's on my fantasy. Yeah, he's on one of my two. Um, but I think Cam Akers makes a lot of sense in Denver. I think Cam Akers makes a lot of sense in, in honestly, Miami. I think Raheem Mostar has kind of taken over that job a little bit. But yeah, Raheem he's, he's, can't, very, he's very injury prone too. He's injury prone and he's a downhill runner. He's a guy that you have to get. He can't pass block and he can't catch the ball in the backfield. So it makes sense. So Andre White. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> so um, I think it makes a lot of sense to have somebody that can give some flexibility. I know that Chase Edmonds. Don't get me wrong. Arizona. I know it's again. Within, James Conner's been hurt a lot. Exactly within the division. He makes. But they, a lot they of have sense. that Eno whatever. Eno Benjamin. Yeah, that guy. He's played well. He's played well. So. Tampa is looking for somebody that can back up. Um, that would be a nice change of pace because you have your bruiser and Leonard Fournette, and then who can catch the ball out of the backfield? Yeah, and you throw in Cam Akers to kind of get your your stretch guy. Yeah, so I think all, a lot of those make sense. And for the Rams, I mean, you're going to get some picks back. Maybe you get a wide receiver back if it works out for you. But but honestly, uh, thinking looking looking at at Tampa's team right now in their current situation. 
I don't know how much they're going to be willing to buy knowing that Brady's out the door. And to be honest, Brady has not looked like Brady this year. No, he hasn't. He's been, I don't think he's thrown over 300 yards in a single game yet, which Aaron Rodgers hasn't either. It's crazy. Well, he threw it for 385 and 351 against the Kansas City Chiefs and then the Atlanta Falcons. But, I mean, you look at this team, and it's about offense is what's hurting them. And so I think right. you you have to – it really, it's not skill position players. It's offensive line. So if you're Tampa – Well, they got hit with the injury bug early in, before the season started. Yeah, but they didn't have a good offensive line before the season started. And, and how are you going to protect a 45-year-old yeah. quarterback with no <laughs> offensive line? Well, I mean, they, they did they did lose their their big time center, and who was the was it the left tackle or the right tackle that left in free agency? I think it was the left tackle. It wasn't Worf, was it? Who was the left tackle? No, Worf's is still there. Um, one of their guys left. Yeah, it was the left tackle because Trenton Worf's is still a right tackle for them. It was another another big name guy. But anyway, yeah, I can't don't, remember. Don't don't need to dwell on that. But yeah, I don't know how much they're going to be looking to buy, <laughs> knowing that Brady's done. I mean, you got to buy. You got. I mean, like, what are you going to do? You Brady's done. Like, what are you going to do otherwise? You got to buy for this one year. Yeah, Blaine Gabbert and Kyle Trout. Yeah, they're they're screwed. They're going to have to get a quarterback. Yeah. Well, maybe they'll get Matt Ryan. He's been benched. So. Mm-hmm. Sam Elger. Yep. Your uh, your boy, your Texas boys out there, slow them, baby. Yeah, hook them. So well, hell, Jason Eason is or Eason is the damn backup quarterback in Carolina. Yeah, I didn't even know he was there. I mean, I mean, it can't get any worse, right? The, the XFL guy just beat Tom Brady, so you know. Yeah, dear God. <laughs> PJ Walker is literally only on that team because of Matt Rule. Because Matt Rule, but here he is beating Tom Brady, so. Okay, we'll wrap this up. If you uh, if you think we're crazy, hit us in the comments. Let us know. If you think somebody else is going somewhere else, hit us in the comments. Let us know. Yeah. As always, we appreciate you. Like, comment, subscribe.